and um, the objective of this session is to um, derive the energy mass equation of the famous Einstein's equation mc square e equal to mc square um, before I get into the stepwise derivation I want to uh, tell what is the fundamentally a uh, different concept he introduced why we are not able to derive or anyone able to derive um, um, this E equal to MC square before Einstein and what was the uh, key uh, concept he introduced to derive that equation. Um, so before Einstein, uh, in, in, in a Newtonian physics of the classical mechanics, um, it was believed that um, all the objects uh, irrespective of uh, the speed it moves um, I just considered uh, that the length of the object uh, the mass of the object uh, are fixed it's it's constant um, it doesn't matter how fast the object is moving uh, the, the time and the length and the mass of the object is um, constant uh, that, that is the key difference what Einstein introduced he believed that uh, the con uh, the the mass uh, and, uh, and the length of the op moving object is not constant it, it varies based upon the uh, speed it is moving in uh, but you may ask that uh, okay we, we are moving we are going in a car um, are we changing the length the car does the length of the car changes or our height changes or our mass changes um, uh, to be very precise it does but since uh, the velocity, the speed we are moving in uh, is very small comparing to the speed of light, it is very very negligible. Um, but if we put a very microscopic or um, um, nanoscopic um, uh, measurement, we will be able to see that, notice that. Uh, but this is very um, true when an object is moving in a very high speed, closer to uh, speed of light. Um, so, so, so that, that is a key concept introduced. Uh, that's how the E equal to mc square was able to uh, derive by introducing this concept. The concept is that when an object is moving in a very high speed, the mass of the object, the length of the object is not constant. It varies based upon the speed of the uh, object it, it moves. Um, so that's a key concept, like the, the, the mass of the object is not constant. But let me take uh, the classical mechanics, the Newtonian, uh, let's say an object A, a force is acting on this object A and it is moving in this direction X. Um, then um, we know that F is equal to MA, right? Here we, we assume in the Newton's um, classical mechanics that the, the mass of this object M is constant when it is in motion, right? And also it is constant when it is at rest, right? Um, and again, the acceleration is uh, given by M dV by dt, which is rate of change of velocity, um, which is nothing but M dx squared by dt squared. That is, V is equal to dx by dt, which is rate of change of displacement and uh, dv by dt is acceleration so so this is the New newton second law um, in this case the mass of this moving object a is considered as constant then we will take the einstein's concept right which is when a, when a, when a object is in motion the mass is not constant anymore so, right, okay. Now let's take that uh, the mass is not constant, right? And the force is given by mv. This rate of change of velocity is acceleration, right? which is m dv by dt plus v dm by dt right this is f 
Okay. Now, what is the work done by this moving object? The work done by this moving object is nothing but the product of force and displacement. Here, the displacement is, let us say this object A is at X and it's moving in this direction. After some time, it goes to X0. So the dx is the displacement is x0 minus x. So work done is f into dx, right? So that's work done. So this is dw s dx that is equal to m dv into dx by dt plus v dm dt by dt into dx. See, this is rate of change of displacement, right? V is equal to dx by dt. So we can replace that by V, right? So if you do that, then it becomes the work done is equal to m dv by V plus V dm into V. That's it. That is mv dv plus v square dm. That's dw. Right? So we need this equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store it in a temp space. So dw is equal to m dv plus v square dm. That be equation number one. Okay, now the most important um, equation is the relationship of the mass of this moving object at rest and its mass when it's in motion. So then again I repeat, the equation which relates to the mass of a moving object to the mass of the object at rest. Let the mass of the moving object be m and the mass of that object at rest is m0 then the relation between these two is m0 divided by 1 by b square by c square so this is the velocity the object which is, which is in motion and c square is the velocity of speed I mentioned about you moving in a car let's say you are moving 100 miles per second which is very significant which is not practical right we are going 100 miles per hour that, that too it's very fast you may get a ticket um, but let us say if you are going 100 miles per um, second still that will be very negligible because the c square is 180 ta into square this 100 square let us say 100 miles per second Still, this number is going to be very small. Still, you will not change the mass that much. Uh, so, if you're going 100 miles per hour, it will become very, very insignificant. That's why you won't see that change. Right? So, but in our case, again, if the, ob if the object is moving in a very high speed, let us say this is moving at c squared by 2, right? Then, the mass has a significant change comparing to the mass at rest which is m0 